Welcome to the third and final tutorial about the encoder configuration in the FlexiSoft Designer. In the last tutorial I explained the configuration of a sine cos encoder and its similarity to the configuration of an AB incremental encoder. In this tutorial we are going to take a look at the last encoder group, the SSI encoder. This encoder group is also configured quite similar as the other encoder groups, which I explained in the previous tutorials. Let's start in the hardware configuration of the FSD again. As in the tutorial before, I have already selected a CPU 0 and a MOX 0. Now I'm switching to the tab elements, where I open the register encoder. In the encoder group SSI encoder, there is the possibility to choose between a SSI master and a SSI listener. Because the configuration of each SSI encoders is just slightly different, we take for our example the SSI master and place it via drag and drop on terminal 1 of the MOX0. Let's start the configuration by double clicking on the encoder icon to reach the configuration menu. Here, there are the same tabs as in the configuration menu of AB incremental and sine cos encoders. Motion type, scaling of the measurement system, counting direction, speed step, encoder splitter box and report. If you need more information about the configuration of these tabs, you can take a look at the tutorial about the AB incremental encoder. Now let's have a closer look on the two additional tabs, SSI settings and error bit evaluation. I'm going to start with the tab SSI settings. Here at the top of this tab we can define the structure of the SSI protocol frame by four parameters. With the first parameter, number of bits of the complete SSI protocol frame, we can set the number of clock cycles for transmission. With the second and third parameter, we can set on the one hand the number of leading bits that don't contain position data and on the other hand the number of bits which contain the relevant position data bits. And at last, we can set the size of the baud rate with possible values of 100 to 1000 kB. At this point it's important to mention that the parameter baud rate is only available at an SSI master. If we take a look at the tab SSI settings of a SSI listener, we notice that the parameter doesn't exist because the value of the baud rate is defined by the SSI master and synchronized by the SSI listener. Let's go back to the tab SSI settings of the SSI master and take a look at the settings about the data transmission. Here we can select if the position value is transmitted once or twice in the SSI protocol frame. If double data transmission is activated, the mock module checks if the two values for the position data in the SSI protocol frame are identical. If they are not identical, the position data from this SSI protocol frame will be ignored. Last but not least, there are the settings for the data coding. Here we can select if the data code for the position data should be binary or gray. Moreover, there is an input field, where we can determine the maximum time in which valid position data are expected. Now let's move on to the tab error bit evaluation. In addition to the position data bits, certain SSI encoders also transmit error bits that reflect the result of internal encoder monitoring functions in the SSI protocol frame. Such error bits can be evaluated using the mock module. During this process, it can be defined individually for each bit where the 1 or 0 represents the error state. If the error state is detected for at least one selected error bit, then the position data in this SSI protocol frame will be ignored. These error bits can be generated by the parameters of the previously discussed tab SSI settings. Each bit which is not position data bit can be used as an error bit. So you can either use the unused bits of your SSI protocol frame as error bits, which are generated by the difference of the parameters, number of bits of the complete SSI protocol frame, and the parameter number of position data bits. Or you can also use additionally the leading bits as error bits. Every additional leading bit replaces one unused bit. 
So that was it already about the configuration of the SSI encoder. By clicking on the OK button, the configuration is saved and we return to the hardware configuration area. This was the last tutorial of the chapter encoders. I explained the different encoders and you learned how to configure them. In the next video, we are going to start with the second chapter, function blocks within the mock logic, and you will learn how you configure the function block speed cross check.